that you tune in our hearts and our minds that we may hear of your word and speak of your greatness in the midst of the hearing of these thy great people. We ask you, Lord, that you grant us ears to hear the engrafted word of God to the saving of our soul and encourage our hearts and strengthen us for this hour and this season and heal our bodies. Father, we thank you. <laughs> we give you glory and honor. Be a hedge of protection all about us. Uh, in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. I hear uh, Fred Hammond sing, Lord, be a fence all around us every day. Amen. We need his protection. We need his protection. How many of you know you need his protection? Amen. It ain't the mask that's keeping you safe. It's not the social distancing that's keeping you safe. It's the Lord who is on your side. Uh, the Lord that watches over thee day and night. He is the one that is keeping us safe, keeping us alive. As we look at our scripture on today from the book of Isaiah chapter number eight, it says he was taken from prison and from judgment. And who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living for the transgression of my people was he stricken. And I want to take for a thought from that particular chapter and that particular verse, who shall declare his generation? Who shall declare his generation? In preparing for this particular sermon and getting myself ready to preach the word of God, the Lord dropped it in my spirit and said, who shall declare his generation? And to declare really simply means to announce or to relate. It means to announce to someone or it means to relate the facts of the particular being whom you are declaring. And uh, there's a particular statement in Isaiah 53 at the beginning. At the beginning it says, Who hath believed our report? And to whom have the arm of the Lord been revealed? And those particular statements actually go together with our subject text. He's asking a question. Who have believed our report? In other words, who have believed what has been written about Jesus, about the prophet, about the Messiah, about the one in whom would save the world. And as we begin to look at the scriptures and begin to see and think about what's written, the book of Isaiah nails it on the head when it asks you a question, who hath believed our report? In other words, the report about Jesus being the Messiah, he didn't come into this world as a royal and regal figure in a palace. The Bible says that he was born in a manger wrapped in swaddling clothes, born to a virgin, a virgin birth. And uh, uh, some people may scratch their head and say, how can a mother bring forth a child and she's a virgin? Uh, and the angel of the Lord notice the story uh, Joseph, when he found out that Mary was pregnant, uh, he was scratching his head, wondering how to put her away privately. But the angel of the Lord Gabriel came to him by night and told him that, uh, fear not, Joseph, to take unto Mary to be thy wife, for that child which is born of her is of the Holy Ghost. 
Uh, and just imagine they, uh, 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 Joseph telling his partners or telling his friends that, yeah, uh, the angel Gabriel came to me and told me that Mary was going to be pregnant and she was going to be pregnant by the Holy Ghost. No doubt they would have laughed him to scorn and say, man, you've been drinking too much of that wine. Uh, you need to give us a little something that you've been drinking. Uh, and then just think that the angel Gabriel came to Mary and told her that she was going to conceive and bring forth a son and call his name Jesus. And then uh, Mary had some questions in her own mind. And when Gabriel finished answering the questions, uh, she said, be it unto me according to thy word. She believed on the Lord. And uh, these things were uh, written in the scriptures uh, concerning Jesus, that he would be wounded for our transgressions, that he would be bruised for our iniquities. You're talking about a king. You're talking about someone who rules and commands is going to die for the meek and for the lowly, those that are downtrodden. That's why he said, who have believed our report? To whom have the arm of the Lord been revealed? And he said and asked the question, he said that Jesus, uh, 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 who shall declare his generation? And as we move on to our text and move through these particular scriptures, because even the, the, the life, even the death and the burial of Jesus takes faith to believe. You, you have to believe God in order to have faith that Jesus, the Lamb of God, that was slain before the foundation of the world, that came to save a wretch like you, that, that came and was a substitutionary death. Uh, for the Bible says that verily for a righteous man would some die per adventure for a good man should some even dare to die but God he commended his love toward us he commended his love toward you and I in that while we were yet sinners while that we were dead in our trespasses and sins uh, Christ died for the ungodly Christ died for you Christ gave his life for you he gave his life as a ransom he himself even preached that it behooved Christ to suffer it was necessary that he suffer, that nobody else could pay the price. That word behooved means it was only he that could do the things that he did for you and I in order to be accepted of God. The Bible says that he's the propitiation, uh, which means that he's the only sacrifice uh, that God accepts for our sin. He's the only way. He's the truth and the life that no man can come unto the Father but by him. And if you believe on him as the scriptures have said, the Bible says that out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Jesus, he proclaimed, he proclaimed that he is the resurrection and the life. He said, he that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And he that liveth and believeth, he shall never die. And these words that were spoken of by Jesus and the testimony of the prophets that were spoken of by Jesus sometimes were hard to be understood. It was hard to be received by faith. Uh, but God, 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 somebody say God. Uh, God has a way. God has a way to bring his word to you so that you can receive of his word, that you can believe on him and that you can trust in the Lord. I see why the Bible said trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding, but just acknowledge him in all your ways and he shall direct your path. I see why you got to walk by faith with God uh, because sometimes things don't add up 
Uh, sometimes things just don't add up to two plus two equals four. But you've got to understand that with God, all things are possible. Uh, that nothing is impossible with your God. And if God be for you, then who then can be against you? Uh, God is the only one. <laughs> My God, I feel the Holy Ghost up in here. I feel like somebody praying for me up in here. God is the only one that can speak words and things come into existence. God is the only one that can part a Red Sea. God is the only one that can lock the jaws of a lion. God is the only one, hallelujah, that can do the supernatural. He can feed the multitude with five loaves of bread and two fishes uh, and have some extra left over. My God, God is setting us up for something great. Uh, God is setting us up for something magnificent. Uh, oh my God, don't you feel it? in the atmosphere don't you feel it in the atmosphere that God is on your side that God is looking to turn things around that God is looking to make you the head and not the tail my God if you just look at Jesus uh, he came before them as a tender prince uh, as a root out of dry ground uh, Bible says that he had no form or no comeliness. In other words, he was not real when he came into this world. He was not set on a pedestal. Oh, but God. Somebody say, but God. But he was the Lord's anointed. He was the Lord's king. He was the Lord's high tower. He was the Lord's hiding place. He was the Lord's goodness. And what Jesus has done, it was marvelous in our eyes. Oh, my God. God, the Bible says that it pleased God uh, to bruise him. Uh, it pleased God uh, to have him set on affliction uh, for you and I uh, because he was wounded uh, for our transgressions. For our iniquities uh, and the chastisement of our peace, uh, it was laid upon him. Uh, only God can cause stripes uh, on another man uh, to cause you to be healed. Uh, it's only God can cause a man to shed innocent blood uh, for your deliverance, uh, for your sanctification, uh, to set you free uh, from the hand of the enemy. Uh, it's only God uh, that can have a gospel that is preached, uh, oh, that can set the captive free. It's only God that can send you a word in your due season. Oh, my God. Have you ever walked through the valley of the shadow of death and your God be with thee? Oh, have you ever been in a hard place and he spoke a word and your God delivered thee? Oh, God. I see why you are my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Although the enemy try to come up against you like a flood, it's the Lord that has keeping thee. You should have lost your mind a long time ago. But God, oh, the enemy wanted to consume you. But God, you had death in your body but God you ought to clap your hands and give God a praise you ought to praise your God oh, in this time in this season in this time in this season you got a right to praise him you got a right to give him glory though things don't add up you ought to give him glory Though things may not seem to go your way, you ought to give him glory. Because when things be down to nothing, your God is up to something. I see what Job said. Oh, you slay me. Yet will I trust you. 
Oh, my God. Your God works through the impossible. Oh, have you ever been in an impossible situation? Have you ever been in an impossible situation? If you've been in an impossible situation, that's a situation for God. That's a time when you ought to praise your God. The Bible says when you count it all joy, when you fall into divers temptations, oh, but you've got to let patience have her perfect work. you got to wait on God. you got to stand still and see the glory of God. you got to hold on and hold out until your change comes. Uh, who am I preaching to today? Uh, you know God sent you a word. Uh, you got to wait. Uh, you got to hold on. Uh, you got to pray. Uh, you got to seek. Uh, you got to knock. Uh, oh, you got to ask. Uh, and the same God uh, oh, that delivered Israel, uh, the same God will deliver you. Uh, the same God uh, that delivered Daniel, uh, the same God who will deliver you. The same God that delivered Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego is the same God that will deliver you. The same God that delivered Saul oh, and Barnabas is the same God that will deliver you. You ought to clap your hands and get God of praise. Oh, just be seated. Just for a moment. Oh, God, I feel you. I feel the anointing in this place. I feel the glory. I feel the glory clouds descending from heaven because we're uplifting the of Jesus. Somebody say Jesus. Somebody say Jesus. Oh, somebody say Jesus. Thou son of David, have mercy. Have mercy. Have mercy. Have mercy on me. Oh, just give me another five minutes and I'll be out of your way. You see here, brothers and sisters, the scripture says, who have believed our report. And then our base scripture says, oh, who shall declare his generation? Oh, when we're looking at Jesus, the Bible says that the Lord, he was taken from prison and to judgment. The scripture is trying to tell you that Jesus' contemporaries, Jesus is those who were in Jesus' corner, those that were the legal prophets, the legal scribes and the Pharisees. When Jesus was accused uh, of being Beelzebub uh, when Jesus was accused uh, of being a liar uh, and a blasphemer uh, those that searched the scriptures uh, the, they should have stood up for Jesus uh, uh, those scribes and Pharisees uh, they should have stood up for the Lord uh, uh, but that's why Isaiah asked the question uh, who have believed our reports uh, you see, brothers and sisters, uh, those were the scholars at Jesus' day. Uh, they didn't believe the report uh, that was written about Jesus. Uh, if they would have believed it, uh, they would have stood up for him uh, and said that this is a righteous man. Uh, they would have stood up for him uh, uh, like uh, Nicodemus did uh, and said that Jesus, uh, we know that you are a man of approved of God. Uh, Jesus, we know uh, that no man can do the things that you do uh, except God be with him. Uh, uh, 
Nicodemus. He saw and believed the report. That's why Jesus told him that you've got to be born again of the water and of the spirit. Those that believe, those that trust can get salvation. They can get deliverance. But those that don't believe, they'll miss the mark. They'll fall short. Uh, that's why uh, they took Jesus from judgment to judgment. Uh, uh, that's why uh, when Lazarus was raised from the dead, uh, the Bible says a notable miracle was done. Uh, uh, those that knew uh, that Lazarus was in that grave uh, four days and stinking uh, with a stone covering the temple. Uh, his sisters were crying and wailing. Uh, and they said, Master, uh, if thou would have been here, uh, my brother would not have died. But Jesus, he being the Savior, he being the Deliverer, he said, show me where you have laid him. And when they showed him, he called forth Lazarus because he is the resurrection. But the Bible says that Jesus wept. Why did he weep? He didn't weep because Lazarus had died. He wept for the lack of faith, for the lack of trust, for the lack of the word that was in those that whom he came to save. Oh God, you can't be delivered unless you believe on the word. You can't be set free unless you believe in the word. For the Bible says that the word of God it's quick and it's powerful and it's sharpening in a two-edged sword. You got to trust in the word of God. You can build your hopes up on the word of God. The Bible says that this word has been inspired by God and it's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction. Uh, for instruction in righteousness uh, that the man, woman, boy, or girl of God uh, may be thoroughly furnished, uh, prepared unto every uh, good work. Uh, that's a good place to praise them. Uh, that's a good place to say, Lord, I thank you. Uh, oh, that's a good place uh, to slip in a hallelujah uh, uh, because of the word. Uh, you better give God a praise. Uh, you better magnify the name of the Lord. I got to get out of here. Uh, I need your attention. You see, Jesus, his contemporary got any Judases in the house uh, that are turned your brother and sister that's looking for occasion to turn you over to the devil. Well, I have to tell you, don't you fear Jesus is near because he won't leave you. He won't forsake you. He'll be with you. Somebody give God a praise. So Judas, he turned over Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood. Nothing but the blood. Nothing but the blood. I thank God for the blood. I thank God for his salvation. So we have to ask a question and the question is who shall declare his generation well we see in the scriptures that Jesus he was in the garden he was in the garden of Gethsemane and the Bible said that he was praying like sweat ran down his face, like great drops of blood, he was travailing. 
for your salvation. He was travailing for my salvation. He was travailing for the salvation of the world until Judas showed up with the guards. Oh my God. And in the garden, Jesus asked them a question. He said, whom seek ye? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. And he said, I I am he. And when he said it, the Bible said they fell back like dead men. So if you're looking at me, set those others free. Ain't that like Jesus? Jesus rather, he'd rather go to the grave for you than you go to the grave for yourself. No wonder they call him a savior. No wonder they call him a deliverer. Hey, hey, no greater love. Tell your neighbor, no greater love. No greater love. So the Bible says, the Bible says that Judas Iscariot told him to put him to death. So Jesus, knowing that his rights were violated, he said to them, I spake openly to the world. I taught in the synagogue. I taught in the temple. And in secret, I have said nothing. He said, why ask me? Ask them which heard me. They know what I said. What Jesus was exerting was his rights. For the Bible says that out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word should be established. Jesus declare him. But if you got the Holy Ghost, you ought to declare him. You ought to be a witness. You ought to declare that Jesus saves, that Jesus delivers, that Jesus sets the captive free. You were called to be a witness. The Bible says, let your light shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your father which is in heaven you were called to be a witness uh, because you are the salt of the earth uh, but if the salt have lost his season has lost his influence have lost his purpose it is good for good for nothing but to be cast out and trodden under the foot of men he was put to death cruelly uh, but do you believe the report will you declare that he is the lord of lords that he's the king of kings will you declare that he is the savior of the world will you declare by your lifestyle that i have found him hey that's able to save somebody uh, out of all of their affliction out of all of their problems, have you only to declare that you know and have found a man ah, that has told me all things? Hallelujah. Will you declare his generation? Come on and give God a praise. Do you know what's said about Jesus? <laughs> Do you trust in him? Do you believe in his word? Do you believe in his power? Do you believe in his anointing? The Bible says that all have sinned uh, and come short of the glory of God. Sometimes we can miss the mark. We can be led astray. Uh, but the word of God is there to straighten us out. The word of God is there to quicken us. The Bible says, when you have heard his word, uh, harden not your heart. He said, uh, 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 
a repentant heart, a repentant heart, a broken and a contrite spirit, he will in no wise despise. When God's word has found us, we ought to repent and say, Lord, I haven't been living the way you want me to live. <laughs> and you know what the Lord will say to you? You're right. <laughs> and if you say, Lord, forgive me, the Lord will say, I forgive you of all of your sins. Come, come, come and be with me, you son or daughter of the Lord, and I will save you. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. And if we trust in God like that, oh, he said, come boldly to the throne of grace that you might obtain mercy and find grace to help you in your time of need. And if you come just like that, trusting in the Lord, he will wash away all of your filth. He will wash away all of your sin. He will restore you. He will renew you. He will revive you. Because it's not the will of God that anybody should perish. Jesus didn't pay the price so that a soul would be lost. That's why I said, come. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. And I will give you rest. He said, take my yoke upon you. Learn of me. My yoke is easy. And my burden is light. If you're yoked today, you can turn it over to Jesus. If you're going through today, you can turn it over to the Lord. Let the church stand. Today I would have an altar, an awesome altar call. I want you to stand where you are. The Lord knows, the Lord sees, and the Lord understands. He knows. Come to Jesus.